Hey, it's me, Raika. Today we're going to have a look at the brand new hero from the Greyborn faction, Kalina the Bloody Feast. Now this hero wears cloth-based gear, is part of the mage faction, and her primary role is to provide control for your team and a significant amount of damage. Now, this is done through her abilities. So, her ultimate skill, she marks the enemy with this little crown over here. At the start of battle, the enemy of the lowest defense is chosen to become the blood sacrifice. So this can be a totem, a minion, anything that is related to the enemy. So this is not necessarily a hero. Once the current blood sacrifice dies, Kalina selects a new victim, giving priority to heroes. When actively used, Kalina manifests a blood altar under the sacrifice's feet, silencing all enemies that are within it after three seconds. The blood ritual is completed and Kalina de deals 400% attack rating damage to all enemies within the altar. So this is a little circle that appears around the enemies. If the blood sacrifice is still alive, all damage, all enemies within the altar will receive an additional 6% of the blood sacrifice's max health. But the damage value cannot exceed more than 300% of Kalina's attack rating. So if the enemies are grouped up together or they are forced into a very specific location on the area of battle, she might be able to do a significant amount of damage. Also, she might also be a good single target hero. Her next upgrade, ritual damage is increased to 450%. And the level 3, if the blood sacrifice is still alive, they will receive an additional damage equal to 10% of their max health but this cannot exceed 600% of Kalina's attack rating. Her next ability, Necrohound. This is the little dogs that she summons. When enemies are near Kalina, she commands her Necrohound. So this is the Necrohound that she's currently sitting on. To deal 280% of attack rating as damage to nearby enemies. That knock them back and stun them for 2 seconds. So this provides a bit of control. Her level 2 upgrade Damage is increased to 300%. Level 3, enemies are stunned for 3 seconds. And the level 4, damage is increased to 320%. Now, the Ephemeral Spirits. So this is a miniature version of this big hound that she's currently sitting on. These will be spawned behind the enemies to attack them and do damage. Passive. Each time a new blood sacrifice appears, the Necro Hound forms a ephemeral spirit. The spirit possesses 120% of Kalina's attack rating and cannot be attacked. Each time the spirit deals damage, 30% of the damage dealt is converted into health for Kalina. If the spirit is attacking the blood sacrifice, 100% of the damage dealt is converted into health for Kalina. A maximum of 5 of these ephemeral spirits can be present on a battlefield. When actively used, Kalina commands the ephemeral spirit to charge towards the enemy currently farthest away from themselves, dealing damage equal to 300% of her attack rating to the target and terrifying them for 2 seconds. So this combined with the stun can be extremely powerful when used on enemies. The level 2 upgrade, ephemeral spirits possess 140% of her attack rating. And the level 3, actively dealt damage is increased to 340%. And the level 4 or 30 engravings, enemy is terrified for 4 seconds. So, this can be a pretty significant amount, 4 seconds of control that she can add for your team. Her next ability, Eternal Lifeblood, which is a passive at the start of battle. Kalina increases her max health by 40%, maintaining the current of percentage of health she already has. After which, she loses 2% of her max health every second. When actively used, Kalina continuously casts spells using blood as a medium to torture the current blood sacrifice for 4 seconds, causing them to lose health. So this is kind of like a bleed. Lose health equal to 125% of her attack rating every second, but will not result in their death. While torturing her victim, the damage Kalina receives is reduced by 60%. So this is a great way to essentially put her on the front row to give her the damage reduction the healing that she already has from her ephemeral spirits. 
and if she successfully tortures her victim for 4 seconds, she recovers 50% of her max health. Kalina cannot use her ultimate skill while this skill is in use. Kalina received damage is reduced by 70% from the current enemy she's currently fighting. And the level 3, additional health Kalina receives at the start of battle is increased to 60% and the 60 engravings. Allied heroes deal 50% more damage to the tortured enemy. So this hero might be significant in doing single target damage. So let's have a look at this hero's signature item. So the unlock, Kalina recovers 2% health per second while torturing a victim. Kalina recovers 2.5% and at level 20, Kalina is immune to control effects while torturing her blood sacrifice. And the level 30 unlock while torturing the blood sacrifice. If they are a boss, they shall additionally lose health equal to 125% of Kalina's attack rating every second. If the blood sacrifice is not a boss, Kalina will immediately butcher them when their health falls below 10%. So this is essentially gives her a little execute damage bonus when she's doing damage to specific enemies. So let's have a look at her furniture. Her three unlock, while Kalina's ultimate skill is in effect, enemies within the altar are dealt 240% of Kalina's attack rating as damage per second. When the current blood sacrifice health falls below 50%, or they have survived more than 6 seconds, Kalina may choose another blood sacrifice so that there are up to 2 blood sacrifices on the battlefield. So this allows her to do more damage on the battlefield. So let's have a look at how she performs in battle. So as I said, she might do extremely well when grouping up enemies or when fighting a single target. So there we go. We're going to immediately start our battle when fighting the enemies. So when we begin battle, we can see that she immediately marks one of the targets. There we go. The hero with the lowest defense and she is able to deal a significant amount of damage. There where she also was able to mark two enemies at the same time with the ultimate skill. There we go. And when she does damage, she performs this area of effect, as you can see here, over the two blood sacrifice and does massive amounts of single target damage. There we go. Now let's have a look at how she performed. As we can see, she did a significant amount of damage. In addition, she also was able to heal herself. So let's have a look at her and how she performs at a much higher deficit. So in this battle, we can see that Fane immediately puts his circle around in the enemy's half of the battlefield, while Odin is easily able to teleport the enemies on top of each other. There we go, we can see Kalina doing her AoE damage to those stacked up enemies. And we can see the little circles on the ground with her ephemeral spirits. Now, in this specific scenario, any hero, for example, maybe a stalling front row ally such as Auna and Grizzle with Odin placed on the back so that Odin can essentially group up the enemies on top of each other while Kalina can easily do a significant amount of single target and AoE damage to the enemies. So the, re the recommended investment that I would say that she would work extremely well would be her 30 signature item and her nine furniture however her 30 engravings might also provide a significant amount of benefit to your team being the increased duration of a terrify however i don't think that it will be necessary for her to be able to realize her full potential 